So we are already live here. Yeah? I think so. <laughs> oh, is it okay? I think from two o'clock it's. Uh... No, sir. Uh, sir, now we are live. No, we are not. 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 We are Question. Uh, okay, I am starting. Huh? Good afternoon to everybody uh, who are connected with us via Zoom or we can say that. Sir, just wait. Thank you, sir, for calling. Yes, sir. office uh, he will join within 5 minutes so hai, sir. okay sir aman sir agar farm d walo uh start from right now okay so welcome to all of you who are connected with us via youtube as well as a zoom so i firstly want thanks to uh, ramesh sir for uh, acceptance of our proposal i, I also want thanks to uh, betsy ma'am for their acceptance as well as our respected manoj kumar sir for their time that will definitely motivates our students and they enlighten their path how they can do in a better way okay and uh, not uh, taking too much time i will proceed from our first speaker our respected dr betsy joseph uh, she did mds and phd in the dentistry he is working as a director research craft counseling if we talk about their career uh, point she have uh, more than 15 years of experience in acad uh, academics research as well as a clinical uh, practice in case of dentistry currently professor at sita dental college hospital chennai india formerly faculty at the dentistry king college university Saudi Arabia. This is the one of the good. We can say that opportunity uh, for all of us. How we can learn from the persons who are already doing did their service at the international levels. 
accomplished several funded or non funded research projects which have been published in peer reviewed journals with high impact factor that is one of the major we can say that need of the our need of the time you have to publish how good publication this will be also discussed by ma'am involved in training post grads and research scholars from different parts of world so at the last i want to compile the all ma'am has published more than 35 research articles in sc and scopus index journal so i again welcome dr betsy ma'am yes ma'am please continue thank you aman sir i hope i'm audible so respected director sir and aman sir Mr. Ramesh, Mr. Manoj, and all the audience, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I am a dental specialist by profession. I treat gum diseases. I do gum surgeries. Then, what am I doing here? Talking about writing. I have. I'm passionate about research, not only executing research, but also uh, writing it and publishing it. So today, in this short span, I will try to give you an overview of. how to go about uh writing and publishing your research which is the last part and it begins with properly planning your research so uh, we have a research consultancy where a team of phd uh, we are a team of phd experts who can, who help researchers and doctors write from research planning till preparing the manuscript and publishing it so let's see how to go about this so when we talk about manuscript writing there are different types of manuscripts of which most commonly seen would be original research literature review one type of literature review which is very much in demand now is uh, systematic review also scoping review another type of uh, writing when you have an important scientific finding which you want to share with the scientific community first you could go for a rapid communication letter to editor case reports these are different types of manuscripts that one usually prepares whatever you are writing you need to remember that it's a type of communication that you're doing so you have to keep it short you have to keep it direct and uh, uh, be ready to write and rewrite your manuscript it doesn't happen in a day so when you're writing you should remember who's your audience you should remember that there has to be a structure and your uh, manuscript has to be organized you need to have a clear idea what to include and what not to include generally one para containing one idea can be a good strategy especially for beginners so if you are a beginner who's trying to write manuscript if you're in medical writing or any any other healthcare research and you want to write manuscripts you want to publish it the first thing you could consider is writing a case report because i would say that this is the simplest form of manuscript why because here we are focusing on one patient all the symptoms um signs symptoms clinical features diagnosis treatment planning everything in detail of one particular patient so case report would be the easiest thing for you to start writing it should be uh, it should follow certain guidelines where you will have a checklist uh, so that you make sure that you've included each and every component that is needed for the um, uh, case report sir ma'am our respected sir is joined yes i will wait welcome sir uh dr sir kindly on your camera we welcome our respected director sir sir kindly on your camera aman ji ji sir most welcome Hello. sir so good afternoon everyone and i welcome all the guests so first of all i am sorry because i am late i was uh, busy in one of the another assignment so i hope that ke uh, everybody is uh, waiting of this uh, today's talk and i have circulated the zoom link also to our student so that they will connect uh, very soon and because initially we have given the two opportunity to the candidate one is the youtube and another one this one we have to start with on the google meet also what you have chosen this platform so excellent so first of all i am thankful to the all speakers for uh, this provide your precious time and as you know that this institute is the running all program of the pharmacy approved by the pharmacy council of india 
we are running the am farm in the nine branches so i hope that everybody they will be the benefited and as we know that medical writing this is the one of the uh, in those day one of the requirement of the industry and pharmacy council of india also focused on the clinical research hospital medical writing and they have connect with the all these student including the diploma with direct with the patient connectivity they want to the increase for this purpose this types of the program is highly beneficial and uh, i also request to all of you because we are running the 10 certificate courses so if you give me permission or if you grant the uh, opportunity i will try my best to also start one of the program like this one of the medical writing in our institute under the autonomous of this institute so thank you very much to see you and i hope that your lecture and today's talk it will be the highly beneficial to all of us and i am thankful to the dr amandeep singh ji for inviting me on this platform and give the opportunity to interact all of you sir i want to include over here we are running one of the isf analytical laboratory this is approved by the cdesco as well as, as nabl accreditation and also we have the animal house approved by the cpc sca breeding and trading so now we are the highly focusing on the medical writing is also because i am running one of the program this is known as the skill vigyan stp this is given by the punjab state council for technology what even that we are the running the program what we are not having some of the expert so today i am very very happy this is the 90 days program and we have the 20 seats so i hope that we can also interact and give the more opportunity to our student and student they are admitted over here throughout the india 85% from the punjab and 15% from the throughout the india so i hope that this types of the program is beneficial to me and uh, i am very very happy because after all being a director this is our responsibility to justify each and everything or the project because on behalf of the faith punjab state council of science and technology this is the sponsored project by the dbt so i hope that uh, if we have the more time than our students they also interact and they also involve because due to the short of the time and i able i am unable to communicate our skill vigyan student but in the next time definitely we connect with you and specifically some of the short tenure if it is the physically possible at our institute i welcome you sir and welcome you madam both uh, all three guests as and when you have some time you can visit this place and this is my core of art i just want to over here to develop one of the unit in this institute as a medical writing one of the great scientist as you know that professor bai ke gupta ji uh he was the uh, president am se bhopal as well as is jammu he is the regular visiting of this institute so two things i want to involve here in our institute one is the pharmacovigilance as well as another part is the medical writing and both it will be the beneficial to the peoples of the pharmacy because the, there is a the lot of demand in every field so thank you very much aman ji first of all i am very sorry to interrupt you and uh, aman ji ne ek beech mein involve kiya but uh, i hope that it will be the highly fruitful to each and every again welcome all of you at isf college of md thank you very much thank you so much respected director sir for your uh, kind suggestions for the students so best ma'am uh, kindly proceed for the first session yes thank you so much ma'am please I... share the slides it's the token now yes can you see the screen now yes ma'am all right thank you thank you director sir yes, for your kind words it's visible yes ma'am thank you so um when anyone wants to write uh, 
any kind of manuscript, we suggest uh, to start with case report because it's the simplest form. And I, as I explained, there are various aspects of one single patient, which you will be including in the case report and a particular guideline, reporting guideline should be used so that you include all necessary points to make your case report meaningful. Other than case reports, uh, the most common type of original research that you would be writing would be clinical trial, cohort study, manuscript related to cohort study, or case control study, cross-sectional study. So all these need to be planned properly so that you can write a very good paper. Because writing comes to the end, all excellent research starts from excellent research planning and executing it very well, doing the statistical analysis meaningfully, and then you can come up with a very meaningful, uh, come up with a meaningful manuscript. Whichever form of a manuscript you're preparing, there are certain components to it. It starts with an in all original research manuscript will start with an introduction, then you will go on with methodology result discussion. In introduction, you are trying to motivate the reader, you're trying to tell the reader, what was the problem initially? So what have you done? What is your objective? What are you trying to find out through this study? And in the methodology, you will be writing very clearly what are the steps involved in conducting the study, all how was it done, when was it done, why, where was it done, all the details so that another researcher can replicate it. And the results should be given in tables, figures, and in the text format. You will tell the reader what you have, uh, what did you find through your study. And all these should be in line. That is the objective of your study should correlate with the methodology that you're doing and the methodology should be respond, and the results should be in line with the methodology. So all your objective, methodology, result should all be in line with each other. And then you will discuss the results. You will discuss the significant findings of your study in the light of previously published research. So studies which are in favor of your studies, you will present and you will also discuss studies which are not in favor, contradictory to your study. And you will also give reason why this study is contradictory. You could give possible reasons. And you could give a conclusion for your manuscript. And you will also give acknowledgement and references. So this is the general out. Uh, outline for writing any original research manuscript. I told you different types of manuscripts in there and for each type of manuscript, a different reporting guideline should be used. Uh, clinical trial, uh, for all these, you need to use different uh, reporting guidelines. Especially clinical trial is something that you would be coming across when you're trying a new drug. So whenever you're reporting a clinical trial, when you're preparing a manuscript for clinical trial, uh, all the necessary headings should be there in your manuscript. In the, For example, in the methodology section, you will write very clearly what is your trial design, how did you arrive to the sample size, how was the randomization done, how did you do the allocation, how did you conceal, all the details should be very clearly done. And a very important point is whenever you're reporting a randomized control trial, a randomized control trial registration number should also be there, which is ideally to be taken during in the ethical clearance stage. Now, other than original research, uh, you could be writing literature review. Narrative review and systematic review are the most common type of uh, reviews that you will be coming across. Uh, in narrative review, you are gathering, critiquing, and summarizing the already published literature. Systematic review, you will be doing the same thing, but it is more focused. It will be revolving around a particular focus question. There's a step, there are systematic steps to do the review. For example, you know, if whenever you take up a systematic review, you have to create a focus question and four parts of your focus question would be what is the population that you're talking about? What is the intervention? What is the control? What is the outcome? So all these components should be there when you are planning your systematic review. Now, now learning about systematic review itself takes a couple of days or hours. So these are just in, uh, these are the steps that is involved in doing systematic review. You'll have a focus question. You need to prepare a protocol. Then you have to search the literature then you have to screen these studies based on the eligibility criteria. Then you need to extract relevant data from the studies you have collected, do a critical appraisal, and then do your systematic review manuscript preparation based on a checklist called PRISMA. 
And where will you look for evidence? Where will you look for published research? On all these, these are all databases, like you have PubMed, Web of Science, Scopus, Google Scholar, Embase. These are different databases where you will be searching for evidence, searching for previously published literature. For example, if you type PubMed in Google, uh, you will get a page like this where you can continue your PubMed search. You have Scopus database where you can search. You have Google Scholar and things like that. Now, after you write your manuscript references, it's a very important part. There is There are different parts of a def reference, different style in which you can write the reference. So all these things are very, very critical when you're aiming at publishing your manuscript in high quality journals. In journals with high impact factor, the style you have to, uh, follow the style of the journal and you have to be consistent throughout. For example, you know, on the left side, what you see, it has reference written in Howard style, whereas in the manuscript part that you see in the right side, reference given in the Howard style. There are different types of referencing style which you need to be aware of when you're writing the manuscript. Other than that, you should be using reference manager like EndNote or Zotero to do your referencing. You should be checking your plagiarism before you send your manuscript for uh, publication. Should also check the language and it should be grammatically correct what you write. So all these things put together is what gives you a perfect manuscript with high chance of getting published. Now, whenever you prepare a manuscript, you have to make sure that there is a checklist that you follow. This is a general checklist. Other than that, you should go to the journal website where you're planning to submit and read through the author's guideline. So all these uh, uh, documents should be ready with you before you uh, go to submit your uh, manuscript to the journal, uh, not just preparing the main text, all these details about the abstract title page, uh, ethical clearance, author contribution, all the details should be available in your manuscript. Otherwise, what will happen, you will submit it to the journal and then it will come back saying, please add these things, you'll be losing time. So it's better to prepare all these documents before you submit. Now, before I conclude, this could be a good uh, reading assignment for you if you can take a screenshot of this. And then this is an interesting article which says what are the common mistakes made in biomedical journals and publications. So once you go through this, you will know that you should not be making these uh, errors so that you, your uh, manuscript is more meaningful, impactful, and it gets into a very uh, good journal. So what I've what I've, the outline that I've given you is from different sources, like uh, there's a good book by Dr. Gibba on developing skills in scientific writing, and then Editage is a good website, and Research ResearchGate is a good website. Nature is another, um, Nature Communications is a good website. And of course, what I've told you is from the experience that I have over the last 15 years. So if you want to learn more about this, you want to get in touch with me, you can find me on LinkedIn. You can also read about my articles on Google Scholar. So this is in short, how to go about writing a manuscript. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to take the questions. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have received a question from a students who are uh, unavailable to join via Zoom. Okay. So he's uh, saying that how clinical trials can proceed for the publication? Okay, how to uh, write clinical trial for a publication. So you have to use a checklist called consort checklist, uh, which will give you all the different parts that should be included. So this, you should start writing after you finish the analysis of your study. So you should do a, plan, a research planning, execute it well. You should register your clinical trial with Clinical Trial Registry of India, if it is being done in India, and get the statistical analysis done. And once the results are ready, once the tables and figures are ready, you should start writing using a reporting guideline consort checklist. Okay, thank you so much, Vatsi uh, for your valuable suggestion towards how to uh, do a case report, how the things can be perceived and what are the various process which are mandatory for the publication specs. So, next is our, our next speaker is our respected Ramesh sir. Ramesh is uh, from pharmaceutical background. 
with around 19 years of experience in medical communications over the years he has worked with biocast solutions public health mccn health and drco he has worked with several clients in asia pacific including nestle takeda pharma sanofi and others also ramesh sir has experience in wide amount of medical writing and deliverable including advisory board meetings he has worked in various specialty with extensive experience of diabetes cardiology nutrition neurology nephrology and as well as men's health he is working the ceo of crex health a medical communication company based in bangalore he is also writing med writer a medical writing training program so i welcome you ramesh sir in uh, online webinar connected by isp moga so welcome sir yeah um, can you hear me um, can yes, you, can you confirm yeah okay so hello everybody uh, thanks for this opportunity thank you dr amandeep for uh, inviting us and it so it's been a long time you know interacting with uh, pharmaceutical students and uh, getting back to it's like getting back to college so after uh, working in the corporate uh, segment this is an honor to be you know part of this uh, program and uh, and also <clears throat> have uh, dr betsy and manoj on this panel so we we have been working together so it's it's, it's a privilege to be on this uh, panel so basically as uh, uh, dr amandeep just explained uh, i've been i've started as a career as a medical writer and then i i moved into multiple roles i moved into account management and then uh, a bit of business development and uh, worked in asia pacific uh, for about 5 uh, years so uh, i worked with publicis health and uh, mccann health and uh, drcom so all these are uh, advertising agencies and some of them are uh, medical communications agencies so basically today i i just want to um, you know uh, introduce uh, maybe some of you are already familiar about medical communications but i just want to introduce to some of you what is medical communications what what does it involve uh, overall and you know inspire uh, some of you to take this profession and uh, as you can see 19 years i am in this so i really love this uh, this profession i'm passionate about uh, medical writing health healthcare communications and uh, if you if you look at career wise it's a wonderful profession to have uh, do not underestimate the potential of this and uh, you know I've, i've started in india and then into asia pacific and i worked with uh, some of uh, the best best clients in, in during my career so if i, I would, even if you're working in uh, in the industry on the clinical the hospital side or something have have a what do you say have an interest in this part of the segment improve your skills and this can this can help you you know in immensely uh, uh, there is an option for freelancing as well so the, the opportunities are endless so i want you to know more about medical writing and that's that's the overall objective so let me okay so this is uh, so i'm i'm representing uh, crixus health so we have started in 2019 and uh, basically it's a mix of advertising communications and uh, basic scientific communications as well and uh, we have recently started uh, uh, a medical writers training program so basically a few of us coming together and uh, interacting with some uh, some uh, phd's m farms bds we have now uh, we have uh, even mbs coming from uh, various specialties from medicine as well so because it, this this particular uh, program helps you you already have this scientific knowledge you already have this uh, writing skills and uh, our course will introduce you to you know put this all together and we will expose you to some assignments And so that you'll get uh, you'll get into the field. You will know what 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 is happening in this field, and that's that's the entire uh, exercise. Uh, so this is my LinkedIn profile, and it's my email ID and my contact number. So if you want to get in touch, feel free. Uh, so just before we go ahead, I just I think this slide is familiar to to you. Uh, you know, being in academics, so the entire right hand side is what we are talking about medical communications, and we have. the regulatory medical rating on on the left hand side and we have systematic reviews and what dr bitsy has just just explained putting together uh, all the data and giving it a structure so that it can be published in a manuscript so this central piece is is all about putting it into making it a scientific document while the medical communication is 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 a bit into the marketing side where uh, you work with pharmaceutical companies and uh, you have to put on a bit of a marketing hat 
and look at branding how you brand a compound how do you support science with branding and you know it, it's a very interesting area and at the same time it's it's, it's not uh, giving too much information to your readers but structuring it properly because even healthcare professionals are human beings you know they don't want to be bombarded with too much information uh, they don't want to you know they're already been through a lot and uh, they've been they've studied a lot so again you give them reams and reams of data it doesn't make sense so the whole um, exercise what these publicists help mccann help havas sorento all these companies do is they structure it give it a story and give it to a doctor and say and and structure it properly that they remember the brand and they have to fight versus other brands other competitor brands while push their own molecule so this is the entire area of medical communication is all about uh, putting that marketing hat and thinking loudly and uh, putting together an idea so yes uh, in medical writing has picked up especially after covid you know the, the doctors have become more digitally uh, what you say trained and uh, digitally savvy they are they are they are open to communication they are receiving hundreds of mails every day through different uh, uh, companies so these are all the list of companies that can actually the, the 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 only gap i find from my experience is many of these companies are also asking for an experience which is lacking for all these mpharms and phds the 6 months to 1 year experience is needed but yeah so network with them already you know start interacting with them by first i'll just spend some time on some few minutes on these companies by first solutions is a leading uh, medical content solutions company based in bangalore it's creating waves and we have indigene which is already well established in the industry know about this company they they are in uh, you know international markets they are doing excellent work globally so it's it's like uh, one of the companies i'm very proud of that it's an indian company creating waves across the world there is metrics there is rx prism and there is publicis health which is again a, a, a giant advertising agency they have multiple departments underneath multiple divisions underneath they have companies all over the world and uh, we have offices in bangalore and mumbai know about publicis health mccann health also it's again uh, scientifically uh, you know they have a very brilliant team Uh, scientifically really very strong talent emiculum is a company which i want you to look at it because uh, this company is known for uh, quality medical education and medical communication you know they they are uk based company but again they are also globally placed mims is one company i'm sure many of you are aware of it they have offices in uh, asia and everywhere so follow mims harvest is an ad, ad agency Novartis I mentioned here uh, because Novartis has a huge department in Hyderabad they have uh, you know several opportunities happening in Novartis they have their own internal division supporting their own uh, you know brand managers and all and uh, they have a very you know highly qualified team so you get a, you get to learn a lot working with Novartis and then pharmaceutical companies themselves like you know you have uh, Novo Nordisk they have their own division Biocon has their own division LIDD has their medical communications division so all these are opportunities IQVIA Paraxel Thero even Viva uh, Viva I want you to I want you all to know more about Viva Viva is a is a platform multi channel marketing platform uh, they it's, it's picking up very it has picked up abroad and now it's picking up in India as well where they disseminate information to doctors through a platform so but they 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 are there is also an opportunity in viva as well hello health is a company which is rapidly expanding in asia uh, they are into consumer now but i think they are slowly getting into the hcp space as well the healthcare practitioner space here com is a digital agency which i am familiar they do uh, very interest they are very advanced with respect to science and they are providing uh, digital uh, materials holograms and all these things i want you to follow dr com as well so these are all the companies which have the potential when you are you know when you are out out uh, you are trying for opportunities and you are really good at creating stories very good at writing content please explore uh, so types of medical writing i just explained uh, there is uh, journalism and extreme left there is medical education there is medical marketing which is the one i am talking about medical marketing and then we have publications presentations everything this is the area where you know dr bitsey just explained the manuscripts the poster presentations all of this and this is the this is a bit scientific space means you you will you will it will be more scientific and less marketing and uh, you don't you, you have to present the facts and there is extreme right we have this is documents and the regulatory documents okay so if if you may ask uh, what are the different roles or functions in a medcoms so 
there are different names to it. There is a junior medical writer, senior medical writer, there are principal medical writer. There is something called medical strategist where you work with uh, what you say, the planners in an ad agency where you provide your thoughts on a molecule, uh, you know, the brand, how it can be extended for the next 12 months. And it's a very critical role. You will be part of an advisory board meeting and you will be working with other doctors in crafting strategies for a brand. So medical strategies, highly paid and uh, you can grow, you have to grow to that role. You may not get it initially a very, at, a, at least a medical copywriter runs from the actual medical writer. Okay, copywriters have to spin off some words, making headlines, creating, uh, you know, enticing copy. I want you to all go and look at ads of the world on Google. I mean, you, you do, do a search and you'll find hundreds of ads available for uh, you, me and everybody. Go through the ads, what are the headlines, what are the punchlines. And if you want to get into an advertising agency, this is a very brilliant opportunity because our scientific understanding of the subject is, is going to help us. Together with this, uh, your English, English uh, writing skills are going to be very helpful and your storytelling skills. So medical copywriters, there, there, there may not be too many of copywriters, but if you manage to get in, you will be that's a wonderful career to start with. Manuscript writers, regulatory writers, editors, QC proofreaders. This is again a separate breed. Uh, they're only going to look at what is done by a writer and then they're going to you know, pick up any errors, mistakes and all of those. And there is an account manager and account director. So I've been an account director uh, for about five years. So basically these are the people, uh, uh, they run the whole project. So they'll be working with writers. They will be working with external vendors and uh, they're also known as a, a client servicing directors as well. So basically these people will be the, will be moving the pieces across and being from a medical or M form, B form backgrounds, you will be well, like, and if you, if you are very good at communication, very good at uh, project management, then this is a very interesting role for you. There's a creative designer and there is a business development. So in advertising agency, we call them the triads, which is, which includes uh, the accounts team, the writers and the creative. So these three members put together, create all these brilliant campaigns we see for uh, Nova Nordis, Nova Artis, all these companies. So no more about all these roles. And there are multiple roles within principal medical writers, one, two, three, and all. And uh, uh, yeah, just, just wanted to introduce you to some of the functions. So any, any content piece, uh, when you look at, whether it's manuscript writing or even medical marketing, it always starts with a literature search. So know about literature search. And it's not just putting, uh, you know, putting a word in, uh, in search engines like PubMed and getting information. You need to have a strategy, how you use your, uh, you know, and, and uh, all those different set strategies. Know more about it because it will help you uh, present as a professional, not just any, any medical writer. And uh, the medical knowledge and English, English writing skills, just, just one minute. Huh? So the medical knowledge, subject knowledge, we all, we all have gained it uh, through our graduation, post-graduation. English writing skills, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, this is also we are carrying for a while. And uh, without these two, it will be difficult to become a good writer, but it is not, a, what I say, this cannot be a bottleneck. You can improve it. But uh, the most important skills are content processing, content editing, storytelling, which is undervalued. But if you want to present yourself as a good writer in the future, know about storytelling, how you craft those stories, and uh, then the reference binders and the project management skills. Reference binders is nothing but how you where did you pick that information and uh, from which PDF, which article, which source, is it a website? And parallelly, you have to always have a reference binder, even if it is a one pager LBL or a uh, 60 pages book. So reference binders are critical, know about it. Uh, so medical marketing, as you can see, we are on the extreme right, starting from extreme left. So we are here where, you know, once the, even, even, even before the molecule is entering into the market, if it's a new molecule, there will be some activities which shape the market. So there will be strategies to, for example, imagine your uh, molecule is working for uh, stroke. And uh, so you initially you have to come together with HCPs and advisory board meeting and see uh, what are the other molecules which are in the market? Do we have uh, clopidogrel and how is clopidogrel doing in this space? Or is there cyclopidine? Is there any other uh, platelet aggregation inhibitor? How, how are they doing in the market? So basically you have to see where, where do you fit in as a marketing guy? And then based on that, you have to identify that guy and you have to create strategies to address that doctor through different communication. So even before you introduce the molecule, there are some activities you have to do. And then you introduce the molecule and see how the market is doing. And then post-launch, 
there are a series of activities that has to be done so these are the three areas which you which you all should be familiar uh, in medical marketing why am i telling all this is uh, pharmaceutical companies have this this function and they, they need writers to craft these stories either they they work with an agency who has a medical writer or they can work directly with you as a freelancer so it is not mandatory that you you are part of a company to work with the pharmaceutical company you can work with biocon tomorrow if you are really good in oncology brands and you are really good with storytelling you can reach out to them they will have jobs for you so that's how you establish and again i i'm, I'm, I'm digressing it you have to present yourself as a brand like some uh, professionals who have done in the industry like you know, one of my references dr hitel shah or dr namrata all these have emerged as brands by themselves like you know when you talk talk about them you are already familiar they are in this space or you brand a company which you represent so either ways you can find work if you are uh, good at the science understanding the science and giving it a structure okay again just i just discussed this there are there are pre launch marketing activities there are launch activities and there are a, a gamut of things that you can do uh, in this area so i'm going to quickly show you we don't have enough time so i'll just quickly show you some of those things so one of the critical components in medical communication is the detailing guide a leave behind literature a case report patient education material and kol is key opinion leader educational material so what are what are the things you are going to share with the doctor and uh, cme programs speaker programs advisory board meetings events and symposia all these activities medical writer has a central role in crafting the whole thing and you will be working with graphic designers and the creative directors okay so detailing aids or uh, the first component which a uh, medical representative and a doctor has a conversation using a detailing aids and leave behind literature is what the doc uh, the mr leaves with the doctor so that he can read in his spare time okay so the whole process is quite simple you have a client brief and you have to develop the content and then once you develop the content you share it with the client before sharing it with the client you edit it proofread it proofread it and then you disseminate it so every i, I tell all my writers all my team members all my colleagues also you would your brief has to be really perfect so whenever you are working with some freelancer always make sure the brief is there and the brief is in a good shape so this is what is going to protect you or save you when there when the client comes back to you and says you have deviated from the brief or this is not what i wanted or you know always give an outline first and then work work on the project so these are all small things which you can build once you have decided to get into the career but your yeah, brief is really important you need to know what you're doing is it an lbl is it a detailing aid is it a poster is it a website you need to know the tone of voice it should be casual or more scientific and what are the key messages you have to ask all these questions to your client or you have to find it yourself to, through your primary and secondary research primary is you speak to some doctors or you go to pubmed or uh, google and you find that information but your brief has to be really good okay the process is simple as i just said you conduct a research build an outline you process the content you edit the content you work with the designer you review it and you 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 discuss how you are going to send it like a print or a digital tool okay again the structure you need to be very clear about what should be my heading what is the story even in detailing it what am i talking normally detailing it always start with an unmet need so like for example you said these many patients are having quality of life issues even when uh, there is a, you know a, a effective treatment options in breast cancer yet the quality of life is uh, you know there is a problem then you talk about the category there is a new category of medicines which can help these patients with with poor prognosis then you introduce your brand look my brand can do all of this then you can compete compare with your competitors my brand is better than brand b and then you close with a overall structure so this is overall a detailing gate structure same thing is followed with a leave behind literature same thing is followed uh, for uh, videos or kbl presentation very interesting subject and uh, every day is a new day today you will be working on uh, oncology tomorrow it will be cardiology the next day it will be something else nephrology you name it so once you, uh, companies like biopros they will be working with uh, multiple projects you will be exposed to a, a variety of uh, material and uh, if you get a chance to work with international clients you know there's a lot to learn in this area okay uh, for example if you take a blog so always your research will be important uh, what what is the purpose of your blog blog who is going to read my blog is it a doctor or is it, is, is he an audience who's already familiar with my brand or he wants to know more about the condition so you need to know who is reading your article what is the tone and don't use too many bullets uh, sorry when you have a 
bullets are helpful when you want them to understand what you want to say in three or four bullet points but don't use too many of them uh, and if it's necessary that it's becoming too many bullets you can again make it into a paragraph structure it well understand uh, search engine optimization this is picking up if you want to get into you can i recommend all my writer all the writers all my contacts to start with the blog blogs you can experiment it you can post it you can see how the audience are reacting if you can share it with some other people and ask how how is my writing skill am i am i you know is it something that i can explore uh, and once you pick even better you pick up a specific area like depression or you know mental health disorders that's one area you can write a lot about so tomorrow people will recognize you uh, you know that you are you are there in this area and then companies and uh, you know contacts opportunities come to you so blogs are one area which you can start picking up again the checklist always have a checklist what is the brief and all these things so we are also having some blogs on our website if somebody wants to publish or if you already done some blogs you can publish with our company we are i am more than happy to uh, you, know, you know publish on our website and expand the reach you can reach anywhere uh, through our blogs or any other blogs and uh, detailing it we just discussed see, these are some examples you know if you can see there is a uh if the brands are louder there are some key messages there there is visual imagery and uh, there is a flow so the, this is all uh, all the content has to come from a medical writer and this this happens because we are familiar with these medical terms we are familiar with the pathophysiology we are fa- familiar with the treatment options all these things that's why a medical writer is very crucial in building detailing aids uh, it's it's a bit of fussy, fussy project because a lot of iterations happen in this but a lot of thinking goes into uh, developing detailing aids okay then uh, there are there is online content so you like know, you can build content for websites like this like nestle nutrition institute uh, nara and uh, all these companies are uh, encouraging people you uh, know from m farm phd's to write on a subject and they are more than happy to publish it so you can write on it you can create interactive case reports you know where you create a patient profile infographics are also picking up very uh, you know these days because no doctors are sent infographics this is again a science in itself so if being from the medical background pharma background you will be able to structure it properly so infographics are an important area i want all of you to learn about it what is an infographic how to structure it it's all about presenting the data through numbers through percentages through visual imagery and uh, you know it, it, even this is too cluttered for me but to to be frank you know infographics are not popular so explore this then there is ql education material it can be videos uh, sent to the doctors from uh, an, an interview from one doctor to other doctors and then case reports like where you talk about a patient history and you talk about uh, uh, his current diagnosis what is the treatment approach and you write about uh, uh, you know the whole uh, uh, discussion part you mention what is the case and how we, why why we have given brand a versus brand b this is different to what dr betsy has mentioned that's a published literature where this is a branded communication uh, which goes with a brand to a company so you know it will have it will be having some sort of marketing into it but more or less we try to identify a patient and then we talk about that case report and there are e signs or something where doctors are exposed to different kinds of news articles online and there is marketing tools like objection handlers how how should a, a medical representative deal with difficult questions from a doctor so and there is review article you pick up a subject and write your own review article there are mechanism of action videos you will be asking what is the role of a medical writer in these kind of videos so you will be building a storyboard so how how the whole animation should go from frame 1 to frame 10 so the whole structure the storyboard has to come from a medical writer even if you are uh, reaching out to international companies like meditech media or emiculum your role will be very critical in building these storyboards for videos and uh, even websites the whole wireframe can come from a writer and then advisory board meetings these are this is this is one critical area but uh, due to you know this itself will take we need at least one hour to discuss but i will quickly uh, give you an understanding of what is an advisory board basically Uh, when a brand is introduced to a market or a client is having a challenge he wants to understand what is happening in the market or he wants to launch a new brand he will come to the agency or he will come to you and say i want to tackle this challenge so what you do is you will you bring together a, a set of uh, doctors into a room and uh, you put up, put your challenges you put your unmet needs or you you do a survey and give the data to them 
and uh, these doctors will come together and say let us do this uh, let us approach this particular challenge in this way through ncp communications or let us focus 80% of our uh, revenue and our time on to patient education because patient is the centerpiece or let us go to the hospitals directly let us not do all this and you they will identify the message and they will identify the audience and they will identify the channels all these things come up, come from an advisory board meeting but you will be understand you will be uh, you will be asking me the question like what is the role of a medical writer in an advisory board meeting so a writer has the potential to guide the entire advisory board meeting starting from the agenda to some publication if it, if there is a potential of a publication for example if the group came together and they had a consensus discussion so at being a writer you have to put together all these points and create a document out of it and you have to make sure that it gets published and once it is published you can again take bits and pieces of this information and uh, present it as uh, snackable content in different formats so your role will be absolutely critical then again you may say i am not made for uh, uh, driving the whole conversation i can only write so then you can be part of the meeting you can take notes or the client will share all the information with you in a recorded uh, format you have to make you have to create a summary of the meeting and they publish it through different channels so know about advisory board meetings especially with m farm and you know if you have a postgraduate degree or a phd your role will be absolutely crucial because you can change the conversation you can guide the conversation you can uh, move the meeting to a more fruitful uh, strategy and uh, big companies uh, pay you know pay a lot for that kind of contribution the so advisory board meetings uh, it's it's a lot in this particular thing but you know these are the some steps there speaker programs are more or less the same some speaker will come and present Uh, at different venues across india or across the globe and you have to create summary reports scientific booklets out of it publication support is what dr betsy has just discussed and yeah so to give to give you a, a short nutshell this is this is all some of the deliverables there is another 80% which which is there in matcoms they come in different different small small components uh, but uh, <clears throat> i want you to network at this level just one second before i close i want you to network uh, as much as possible at this stage uh, these are some of the uh, professionals I, i i mentioned few of them but everybody can has the potential to introduce to some of the other company so dr dr hetal sir runs a company e medi right she does a lot of uh, uh, writing and all that monoj is here in the panel betsy is also is in the panel uh, dr sam matthew could not join it but he is also an interesting contact for all of you to connect and learn Dr. Poonam Bhor is with uh, Brand Care, and uh, she was earlier with McCann. She comes with a lot of Medcoms experience. Uh, Rupali is with uh, THB. Vivek Karma is with Novartis, and uh, Kyur also. Kyur, uh, Dr. Kyur Brombet also comes with a lot of experience. And know about some of these individuals who are abroad in Asia Pacific. And you know, you never know with your experience if you have the right skills. Uh, world is the limit. You don't have to restrict yourself to India. in agencies nowadays even meditech is hiring uh, lots of writers from india so their assignments are pretty simple they will give you a full text article and they want you to write a summary out of it so basically they are lo they are looking at how you are going to tackle a full text article or your understanding of the subject and how you are going to structure it and uh, you know uh, good storytelling and all that so basically three or four things they are going to look at it and uh, that there's a good of even mechan health hires from india so akansh is is the ceo of thb they are they are running a company which, which deals with real world evidence so that's a company you should know and uh, sushant jo see she is with harvest and also you should know few believing represents mims uh, and dinesh is with biocast so these are some of the contacts i mentioned that but feel free to uh, access my account on linkedin you will you will have lots of contacts with different agencies from medical communications so that's it from me hope i i introduced Uh, a little bit about medical communications to you thank you thank you dr amandeep amandeep so you are on mute you are on mute sir are you getting Hello, sir. Yeah, no, no, we can hear. Yes, sir. This. Thank you for your valuable suggestion. The question is, how uh, can B form students proceed for junior medical writer or, or only M form? 
Yeah, so uh, B firm candidates also can uh, uh, start as a medical writer. Uh, it basically, they need to have that uh, you know, English writing skills, first of all. Subject knowledge is already there. And, uh, you know, the storytelling they have to learn. So basically, pharma companies are looking for how good are they with the subject knowledge. They can take up small, small opportunities like writing blogs, uh, you know, reach out to companies, take up small jobs like leave behind literature. They can freelance to small, small agencies and then learn how, how these inputs are developed. And over a period, they gain some experience and then they can reach out to BioQuest. BioQuest has high pressures as well. Uh, but, you know, it happens. Uh, you just have to keep looking and connect with them. As the opportunity comes, they can take up uh, jobs. And they, uh, BioQuest is a very good place to start. Indigen is a very good place to start. And then over a period, it, it all matters is your experience. Be firm with three, four years experience, it will be really good enough, yeah. Uh, sir, from your all content, it has been observed that ki if students have a good writing ability, uh, so he or she can proceed with this uh, good medical writing approach, huh? Correct, correct, yeah. So they These have to experiment. There is no issue, but thing is you must have a good uh, creative ideas and how to th uh, things you can present, you know? Correct. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your, uh, the content is much worthy for our students to know more about the basics of publication, basics of medical writing. Thank our, you. Thank uh, you uh, next speaker is our respected Manoj Kumar Jadava, sir. So, Manoj did his B farm and master's in pharmacocracy from Government College of Pharmacy, Bangalore. And he's also GFAT qualified. If we talk about the experience of Sir, he has uh, more than 15 plus experience for associated with the corporate pharmaceutical experience. He also helps pharmaceutical organization to set up their uh, proper platform. His key of interest include online automation, medical pharmaceutical communication, transforming conventional communication, or creation of online solutions. Even since the Pandemic strikes, Manoj uh, sir has been conducting weekly webinars for pharmacy professionals to create awareness about different career opportunities in pharmaceuticals and health agencies. So, thank you so much, sir. Uh, your CV uh, says a, a lot for us. Your uh, contribution in the pandemics that will also uh, help us. Respect, respected director, sir, is also uh, with us. Yes, sir. Namaste, sir. Namaskar, namaskar. So thank you, thank you very much, sir. And you, sir. Uh, as I was talking about you, we are the also running uh, one of the projects of the skill Vikyan. And uh, this is uh, one program we are running under the STP. This is the medical writer. So today, we have in front of us, our state, uh, Punjab State Council, three, three nominees. So I yes, hope that it will be the beneficial or uh, jo Manoj ji, aapko mein request karunga ke I want to establish over here one of the center of the medical writing. So what do I need to do for this? Sir, we will discuss it. Ramesh ji is here. So we are working on this. We have been 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 working on this. We मेडिकल राइटर्स को कैसे ट्रेन किया जाए और क्योंकि स्किल लेबरर्स की प्रॉब्लम है बिना स्किल के बिना ट्रेनिंग के इसमें फील्ड में एंटर नहीं हुआ जा सकता और ट्रेनिंग अगर यू नो क्वालिफाइड पर्सनस या स्किल लोग ही करें तो बहुत अच्छा रहेगा और हम लोग तो यही सब कर रहे हैं तो आपसे डिस्कस करेंगे डेफिनेटली और हम प्लान करेंगे सर श्योर श्योर सर वेलकम और जो नेक्स्ट हमारा सेशन वी वांट टू स्टार्ट इन द मोस्ट प्रोबेबली इन द मंथ ऑफ द अक्टूबर तो उससे पहले हम कोई एक अच्छा प्लेटफॉर्म डेवलप कर लें बिकॉज वी आर रनिंग द एम फार्म एंड फार्मेसी प्रैक्टिस फार्म डी एंड फार्माकोलॉजी जिसमें मेडिकल राइटर का बहुत बड़ा स्कोप है yes, और फोर्थ वन है जिसमें वी आर रनिंग वन ऑफ दी सर्टिफिकेट प्रोग्राम अंडर दी एस ऑफ द अप्रूव बाई द डी And partner is the who running by the Punjab State Council of Science and Technology. Excellent, sir. Yes. Sure, sir. Actually, we we are also running some uh, a, a course curriculum already is there. I think we can work together and give it a proper shape as well. So we are currently doing this with uh, in uh, medical marketing and manuscript writing. But I think speaking to you and uh, your faculty and all, we can structure it more properly for uh, uh, with ISF uh, College of Pharmacy. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Exclusively designed for pharmacy students. Yes, absolutely. 
absolutely yeah, yeah. so thank you very much sir for uh, just give your uh, precious time and i hope that uh, because i know that this is the also live and recorded program so this is recorded program from your side sir nahi sir aapke paas hi recording ho rahi hai aapke youtube pe okay, live okay. hai ye so sir. i will also provide to you और इसमें जो भी हमारे पास और अच्छे रिस्पॉन्स आएंगे कुछ बहुत सारी क्वारीज आती है आई विल ट्राई टू फॉरवर्ड टू यू एंड वेरी शून वी मीट टू ईच अदर सर डेफिनेटली सर थैंक यू वेरी मच सर थैंक यू नाउ नो सर काइंडली प्रोसीड विद योर सेशन प्लीज डेफिनेटली सर आई डू दैट आई विल जस्ट शेयर माय स्क्रीन ये ऐसा है मैडम सुनो ओके सो सर मेरी स्क्रीन विजिबल है इज माय स्क्रीन विजिबल या वी कैन सी मनोज ओके परफेक्ट सो थैंक यू एवरीवन थैंक यू अमन सर फॉर टेकिंग दिस डॉक्टर बेत्सी एंड रमेश फॉर वंडरफुल रमेश जी फॉर दिस वंडरफुल प्रेजेंटेशन एंड यू एक्चुअली हैव गिवन अ कंप्लीट ओवरव्यू ऑफ ऑल द करियर अपॉर्चुनिटीज दैट वी हैव आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग मोस्टली ऑफ द अदर टाइप ऑफ करियर अपॉर्चुनिटीज नॉट जस्ट मेडिकल मार्केटिंग एंड मेडिकल राइटिंग एंड नॉट इंक्लूड दैट in this presentation because you have already covered that as an overview okay so perfect so let's start uh, this presentation i will be talking mostly about uh, the different career opportunities that we have and before we go uh, just little bit about me so basically i'm a pharmacist i have done my mpharm i'm currently pursuing my uh, mba it and phd and uh, i'm a part of uh, this program called pharma disha that happens in bangalore it is organized by the karnataka state pharmacy council and the rajiv gandhi university of health sciences uh, we uh, train uh, mpharm students uh, for uh, the further research activities and also give an overview uh, to their entire curriculum and i am a technical advisor to couple of pharmacy councils uh, i am also in the editorial board member uh, for the drug information center that goes uh, uh, the newsletter that is published by the karnataka state pharmacy council so this is what uh, i am i am also a medical writer by profession and then what i do uh, yes i i conduct weekly webinars on uh, career opportunities for pharmacy professionals uh, i help them get learn about this digital footprint which is very important these days without digital we can't survive so i train them uh, what and all platforms they should we use how to use i also train them on using linkedin uh, i conduct medical writing webinars uh, so far i have conducted about 12 of them and i do one to one sessions so i know a lot of pharmacy students they don't want to discuss in public uh, they want to have one to ones so that is what i do i just interact with them one to one and uh, help them sort out their problems and queries and uh, you know help them deep dive into their uh, you know career opportunities so perfect so uh, what is the what are the learning objectives of this particular session that i am doing uh, i'll you know briefly uh, discuss about some points that we should always think about when we are in pharmacy then uh, i'll also talk about four reasons why we are struggling when it comes to career opportunities despite the different career opportunities that we have we still struggle there are reasons for it we'll discuss about that then finally i'll uh, talk about the different new career opportunities that are there currently for pharmacy students uh, we'll i'll talk about some job search tools few of the websites that we can use for searching jobs then uh, the most important i'll talk about the four strategies that pharmacy students can follow to uh, you know get the uh, jobs of their choice then we'll have a q and a session i'll try to answer some of the queries that you have in your mind with respect to job search so let's begin okay so first first is of course points to ponder some some points that is very important yes how many of you know that pharmacy has huge opportunities you know it's a you know most of the pharmacy students they come by chance in pharmacy and they are always uh, you know they they have a clouded mind they feel okay there are no so not so much of opportunities right that is what our general understanding is so i'll try to break, break that myth uh, there are a huge huge amount of opportunities okay uh, that exist uh, i can tell for sure that uh, there are a lot of opportunities uh, i have been in corporate for 15 years and i'm connected to more than uh, 10 15000 pharmacy professionals across the globe and i know a lot of opportunities exist okay so let's see what uh, they are okay this is another thing uh, we have 4 lakh pharmacy uh, professionals graduating every year from more than 3 uh, 3.8000 uh, colleges in india so 4 lakh pharmacy professionals of course uh, you know always the opportunities will be there for those who are most qualified 
and who those who can stand out of the crowd and that is what we are trying to do here we are trying to train them uh, help them and nurture them to so that they can get those opportunities right pharmacy is and is the probably only profession which is completely recession proof right we have seen that during the pandemic and when everybody else was struggling uh, pharmacy was one profession that was completely uh, uh, you know recession proof and it was doing absolutely excellent uh, you know in uh, business and you know it was helping a lot right so these are some of the points that we should always remember before we even uh, think of getting into jobs in pharmacy so now, now let's see why we are struggling uh, you know we did, we know there are so much of opportunities we are qualified we have hundreds and thousands of colleges across india but then why are struggling so let's see these are some of the reasons this is one major reason uh, why we are not able to secure good opportunities in the pharmaceutical companies the one reason is employability uh, you know is less than 45% what does it mean most of the students who come out of the college they are they have the qualification they have the degree but they do not have the relevant skills so this particular uh, you know news was published uh, in the deccan herald uh, last year uh, in uh, on september 21 uh, 2021 it was part of a big survey they did and they found that uh, you know although we have huge degrees we have a huge amount of certificates lots of certificates but still the skills that is needed for a job uh, we do not have those skills so employability is something that is really a matter of concern for all the pharmacists including me i am struggling uh, you know whenever i interact with pharmacists across india i find it very very difficult they have you know a good percentage of marks but then when it comes to employability it's very very difficult or uh, there are a lot of parameters where, you know when it comes to employability one of the most important parameter is communication skill right and because of that uh, most of us are losing the jobs that they exist right and all this uh, you know since uh, often we are discussing about medical writing scientific writing these also need certain specific skills right we have we need communication skills we need reading skills we need writing skills we need understanding skills and unless we have those skills we can't even think of getting into this profession so though we have a lot of opportunities uh, the employability uh, skill, uh, score has something which has to do and a lot has to be done at the college level of course and um, we are working on it and hopefully yes we'll be able to do something great here right so that is the first point and identity crisis is the second point okay so we do not know how to represent our own degrees right uh, you know i have been working on a lot on this uh, you know i spent uh, you know hours of discussions on this uh, we have to represent ourselves our degrees perfectly so that you know we are available on search results right everybody is searching for these degrees and unless we represent them uh, properly on google on uh, linkedin on all other search engines we won't be able to you know showcase our talent and our visibility there so representation is very important we should know as to how we should represent our degrees correctly uh, in the right way everywhere right not just the resume but everywhere else so that is this is another thing that we are supposed to work on and we are working on it and hopefully yes we can do it we do not do any homework right uh, we want to apply for jobs but we do not want to do anything ourselves we'll send a resume and we expect everything to happen uh, through that we do not want to upskill we do not want to work uh, you know uh, improving on the resume we do not uh, want to connect with uh, people who are in the industry so these are certain things that uh, you know help us not get the jobs on time right no will to us upskill right we do not want to upskill so we think okay fine we have got the degree and that's great uh, you know now it is the responsibility of the pharmaceutical industry and the hospital to just get us a job right because we have got a good percentage we have amount lot lot of skills we have lot of certificates we have attended so many webinars but are those skills relevant to the job we are applying we never think about it and this is a major problem uh, you know i have seen uh, people with 30 40 uh, you know different kind of uh, certificates with them but uh, none of the uh, certificates say that okay yes you are qualified for this particular job for which you are applying so this is a major uh, problem and these are the major four reasons why we are struggling and all these four problems are nowhere related to the college right they are all related on an individual so if i am struggling it is these problems are related to me the college uh, the you know the profession has not to be blamed 
right? I have to work on all these things, uh, you know, all these four aspects for my career growth. And this is what I teach my students. Uh, you know, I have been conducting all these webinars for a long time. And all these four, uh, you know, uh, reasons uh, for which the students struggle, we are working on them one on one, right? So this is the this is these are the things that we have to think about before we plan. Now let's uh, get into what are the different types of career opportunities that we have for pharmacy professionals, and here are some of them. So first is of course the you know higher education. So if you have done D farm, you can go for B farm, you can go for farm D, you can go for M farm, PhD, postdoc, and all those. These are the opportunities, and you have these opportunities in India and abroad. Everywhere these opportunities exist for you, higher education. Next one is teaching. You can get into teaching if you love teaching. And um, you know my suggestion is to get into teaching only if you love teaching. Do not get into teaching if you do not love teaching. Because if you don't love teaching, and uh, you know this holds good for every job, if you do not love that job, please do not get into that job. You'll be completely screwing up everything, right? So that's important. Uh, teaching uh, gives a great platform to you know, help thousands of students uh, achieve their career objectives. And uh, next one is research institutions. Lot of research institutions are hiring pharmacy professionals. So we have, if you are uh, research oriented, if you think research is something you are passionate about, then yes, lot of research institutions are hiring. And if you have the skills, then you can connect with me and then we can always discuss and plan something. Of course, pharmaceutical industry, uh, you know, employs more than 80% of the pharmacy professionals right now. And uh, we have huge amount of opportunities for skilled professionals, okay? Skilled and qualified professionals is important. Qualification does not mean just the degree. There are a lot of other skills also the pharmaceutical companies are looking for. And uh, unless we have those skills, we cannot really expect ourselves to get into the pharmaceutical industries. So I've done a lot of webinars on this topic. So you can search and you can always get into uh, learn those new skills and uh, you can always discuss with me as well. Next one is entrepreneurship. Uh, you know, a lot of opportunities exist. Uh, I have I have more than 50 cases uh, right now. I can know I can tell you that there are a lot of pharmacists who have started their own businesses. They've started uh, technology related businesses, uh, you know, counseling related businesses, and they're really great, doing great. There are some pharmacy, uh, pharmacists who have uh, become entrepreneurs. So they are, you know, uh, making a great uh, difference in terms of education, providing educational services. So these are opportunities that exist and you can become an entrepreneur. Uh, you can start your own pharmacy, you can start your own company, you can uh, do anything that you want to, right? And there are a lot of upcoming opportunities. So this is the most, uh, uh, you know, uh, the most important side that I always want to discuss on. And these are the upcoming opportunities that they exist. And thanks to COVID, uh, these opportunities are now existing more than ever. Okay, so let's see what are those opportunities. The first one is, of course, data science. A lot of companies, uh, you know, who are primarily into IT, uh, they have started deploying pharmacy professionals uh, for getting into, uh, you know, real uh, time evidence, right? So a lot of artificial intelligence, machine learning companies, they have deployed, they are deploying pharmacists, specifically M farms and PharmDs to uh, work in data science. And there are a lot of degrees which are also available, which, uh, you know, we can do after B farm and M farm and PharmD and get into this core data sciences. So I've spoken more about this. I have also posted on LinkedIn. So if you are connected with me, you can check on that. Uh, which, due to uh, you know lack of time, I'll not be discussing more on this, but there are a lot of opportunities on data science, okay? Next one is e-commerce, e-pharmacy. Uh, just recently in Bangalore alone, Bangalore and Mysore alone, uh, were, uh, Reliance hired about 458 uh, PharmDs and D farms, okay? For their uh, e-commerce e uh, business. So it's a huge opportunity existing uh, in almost all the places. A uh, lot of uh, e-pharmacy e chains are coming up and they are hiring D-farms, PharmDs, and even M-farms for their operations. And depending on the type of job role, uh, you always have an opportunity there, okay? Not just in the front end uh, where in the, you are sitting in the stores, but also in the back end where you are reading prescriptions, doing counseling services. All of that is available for e in e-commerce business. A lot of opportunities exist okay digital marketing yes uh, i have spoken about this we did a webinar also on this so there are a lot of opportunities that exist in digital marketing and most of the companies are also ready to train you 
So right now, you know, uh, one of my friend is looking for a digital marketing, uh, marketing interns, and she is ready to train uh, you if you want to dive deeper into digital marketing. I'll be posting that on LinkedIn uh, today. If you are, um, you know, if you want interested, just let me know and then we can always discuss about it. So digital marketing is something which is offering huge opportunities for you because every hospital, every pharmaceutical company, uh, they want to go digital and promote their services. And who knows best, you know, uh, with respect to pharmaceuticals, only a pharmacist, right? So we have huge opportunities there. The only thing is you need to learn little, uh, some of the skills and all these skills are learnable. Uh, you know, I also train uh, uh, you on this. Uh, so of course there are a lot of training programs available and most of the companies also train you for, uh, when you are interested to get into digital marketing. So this is something which is, which can be explored and you can just sit at your home and then do anything you want, right? So this is a wonderful opportunity. There are a lot of opportunities in IT, med tech and health tech companies. Uh, you know, these are the companies which are working on softwares, they are working on the devices, they are all working on the technology part, and they need somebody from the pharmaceuticals to help them and guide them understand the requirement of in the domain. So you can always explore this and uh, if you are interested in technology part, then you can connect with me further and discuss and I'll you know, help you understand the different opportunities. There are a lot of pharmacists who are working on this right now, as we speak, uh, you know, we have also done a lot of webinars on this. Uh, there is one specific webinar that I can mention. You can search on YouTube and then get the information about, okay? Medical devices, yes, a lot of pharmacists are working in this domain. They are working closely with engineers and understanding the different requirement of medical devices. They're helping a lot of patient-centric approaches there. So medical devices, again, offers you huge amount of opportunities. Uh, so you can think about it. Insurance. Why insurance, you'll ask? Uh, yes, a uh, lot, lot of insurance penetration has happened in India right now. And all these companies, they want to understand whether the drugs and the medicines are you know, given by the hospitals for that particular bill were relevant or not. And that is when they need advices from the pharmaceuticals. And where that is when you need you as PharmD or clinical pharmacist or a pharmacy professional can help them, uh, you know, uh, help them in their uh, you know, uh, insurance claims, right? So you get opportunities there in insurance as well. And I have a lot of friends who are working in this uh, insurance part. Uh, so if you are interested, then definitely we can discuss, connect, and then work on this. Consulting firms, uh, just like me, I'm working as a consultant. I work with multiple companies. So if you are, if you have the relevant skill, and uh, then the opportunities uh, exist for you for from around the you know globe, right? So not just in India, you have opportunities from all across the globe, and then you can work with them. Gym, a lot of, uh, you know, gym is a you know, wonderful place where pharmacists are making a difference. Uh, you know, I know one M from pharmacology here in Bangalore who has started working in gym. He has started his own gym. He wanted to help these, uh, you know, people who come to gym for workouts by providing them uh, proper nut nutritional support advice. And that is when you can uh, play a key role uh, because you know pharmacology, you know disease, you know medicine, you know the nutrition. So you are you can be a one stop advisor for helping this uh, you know people who want to keep them, themselves fit, right? So you can also start a gym. You can also join gym as a consultant, and you can really make a difference there. Freelancers, yes, huge amount of opportunities exist. So Ramesh is here. He can definitely agree with me that as a medical writer also, you can freelance with multiple companies and you can work as a consultant with multiple companies and work. So these are some of the you know, upcoming opportunities. There are much more. There are you know, work opportunities in pharmacogenomics. There are opportunities in HUR. These are all new terms. So, you know, a huge, huge amount of opportunities exist and due to lack of time, I'm not adding them, but then there are more than 40 plus different opportunities that I have covered so far, uh, you know, through these webinars. And in these webinars, you can watch, uh, you know, experts talking about these opportunities. So you please go through them and then definitely you'll learn more about these different opportunities that exist. Now there are uh, job search tools, of course, uh, uh, we need to understand how to get into these jobs once we have the qualification, once we feel that we have the right skill and experience, there are some tools that we need to understand we should go and get in, right? So first is, of course, I always suggest that every college should have their alumni association and uh, alumni referral can help you make a difference in the beginning, right? Because no one will trust you first. Uh, you know, only your college, only your alumni can trust you the best way, right? So go for the alumni associations and, uh, you know, connect with your alumni, right? 
and then connect with them and get this opportunity because the kind of referral that you can get from alumni no one else can help you getting there so alumni is the first point of contact i always support you getting in there the second is of course linkedin uh, you know you can connect you can do the networking you can get the connections and then you can help so you know i was just just before the session i searched for uh, jobs in pharmacy in india and it showed me about 1781 results so this is on linkedin uh, and these opportunities come directly from the companies and if you are connected with the right companies and connections then definitely uh, it will help you to get uh, you know the opportunities right away google uh, of course all of us know it and google has huge amount of uh, google for jobs uh, is a site that can help you to create your profile and it you know compiles all the job opportunities from different portals and pushes in just one place right so jobs.google.com is the site that you should be registering with and uh, you can just keep applying directly from your phone or mobile phone right so it will help help you to getting uh, get into the different kind of job opportunities so google is another one indeed is another one indeed has a good amount of opportunities and there are some of the niche opportunities you get on indeed you will not get these opportunities on other places but uh, you can get directly on indeed so this is indeed is another platform nokri is of course all of us know this uh, you know nokri has a specific tab which is giving an opportunity for uh, for all the work from home opportunities are available there so if you have a profile on linkedin uh, sorry nokri and uh, you want only work from home there is a filter you can search for work from home opportunities on nokri and get started from there the only uh, suggestion uh, on nokri is you need to constantly keep updating your profile and that is how your uh, profile gets visible to the recruiters so that's the only tip uh, on nokri and rest of the thing is all easy right so next one is monster uh, monster is also a good site you do not have much opportunities there but then that is also a good site to you know give an option they also have a work from home option uh, tabs a specific tab they also help you to get the career tips if you want to format your resume or plan your career they have some tips wonderful tips on the site so these were some of the sites that you can you know refer to uh, sorry okay so these were some of the sites that you can think of and get into uh, different job profiles now let's understand how to win this game of job search right so there are four steps that i have come across i have understood uh, you know after interacting with thousands of pharmacy students across india so these are the first uh, you know four steps that is important the first is of course Uh, don't get into a job just because somebody is doing well in that job you know most of the pharmacy students they want to get into say pharmacovigilance or uh, you know the medical writing or any other job because their seniors are working there or because their batchmate has got a job please do not do that what works for somebody may not work for you right so first thing is you have to understand your skills and the knowledge that you have so what kind of skills you have you have to map those skills and there are tools to do this today and you know, you know i have discussed some of the tools on my youtube channel you can watch them first thing is understand yourself apply only for the jobs that your skills and knowledge you know allow you to get into the job do not apply for everything right that's the first thing identify the opportunities you know you have to do your homework no one else is going to help you here no one okay so i'm saying no one means no one you have to work on those opportunities yourself first identify the different opportunities based on your skills and knowledge and then do your homework find out the companies that are providing those opportunities connect with those individuals who are working on the comp in those companies you can also take help of your alumni right that is the first thing that i showcased and then once you have done that then you develop those skills if needed so when you are identifying the opportunities you will find out if there is a skill gap okay so if for medical writing say example is you need a you know good writing skill good communication skill so if you know that you don't have those skills you start working on your skills you know working on your skills right when you are studying in your college don't start working on the skills after you come out of the college that's the best thing right before you come out of the college start working on your skills you know take some assignments start working and then once you have developed those skills then apply for the jobs okay take initiatives because most of us will attend this kind of webinar we'll learn the things and then uh, we'll just forget okay so unless we act on those initiatives we take our initiatives it will not help us knowing and not doing is equal to not knowing that is i i keep telling in all my webinars 
unless we work on uh, you know those uh, initiatives we take on those initiatives it is as good as not knowing so we start working and taking initiatives all these details of all these points that i told just now is available on my youtube channel and there are you know hours of content available so what we are trying to do here is just putting everything in just half an hour 30 minutes and close it but it is not possible for us so please watch those videos at your free time uh, you know i have made it freely available on youtube uh, watch them and then you can take initiatives okay so those are the four steps and uh, you can learn uh, you know about different for 40 plus career opportunities directly on my youtube channel it's very very difficult for any of us to summarize everything in just a half an hour right so please watch them and uh, you know stay current uh, stay current is important because we should know what is happening in the field what are the new things that are coming up pharmacogenomics is something which is uh, you know which started just one year back in india and there are a huge amount of opportunities in pharmacogenomics Artificial intelligence, if you are doing PharmD or pharmacy practice, there are opportunities in artificial intelligence. They want to map huge amount of data, patients' data, and they need support from people who know patients, who understand patients, who understand diseases both, right? So if you know uh, the, if you if you have the right relevant skills and if you know that, okay, such an opportunity exists, then you can definitely uh, get into uh, the new opportunities. Okay, so those were the different things and perfect. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, you can connect with me on any of these platforms. Uh, just Google me uh, with my name and I'm sure you'll be able to get me uh, on the platforms and please connect and then I'll be more than happy to help you out in anything that I am capable of. Thank you so much. Aman sir, you are on mute. Aman sir, you are on mute. Sir, you are on mute. Mute, mute. Unmute. Yeah. Yes, sir. I am audible. Yes, yes, sir. Loud and clear. Okay, okay. Okay, sir. I uh, That was mute. Uh, thank you so much, uh, no, sir, for your valuable direction uh, for this topic. So, sir, uh, our institute student, uh, Shamili Sahu, uh, she has just dropped a message on the chat box of our YouTube. Okay. Uh, the question of Shamili is, sir, how she can proceed for digital marketing after m -pharmacy? So, uh, digital marketing, uh, there are some companies who want experience in digital marketing, uh, but there are companies who are ready to train pharmacists. Uh, you know, some of my friends who are already in, uh, from pharmacy and are in digital marketing, I have requested them, requested them to train our pharmacists to get into digital marketing. So some of them have agreed. And, uh, you know, there is one person right now who's recruiting for digital marketing interns in Mumbai. If your uh, students are interested, then please contact me and then I'll discuss. Uh, if you have the right, uh, if the students have the relevant skills, then definitely they can start working from wherever they are right now. They don't have to travel anywhere. They can start working from wherever they are. They just need the basic training and the companies will provide the training. Uh, sir, one more my personal question is, Sir, you have said consulting firms are used. So, sir, uska kya matlab hai? how it's feasible for the students? Sir, abhi dekhe, bahut sare, uh, there are so many companies who do not want to hire full-time people, right? So, they uh, there, if you can showcase your skills and uh, you know knowledge, then they are ready to hire you as a consultant for project, project to project. They'll hire you for some project. They'll deliver the project if that works well, and then you can go for the next project as well. Okay. So there are a lot of consulting firms. If you do connect with me later on, then I'll discuss with you. Including pharma companies. Huh? There are a lot of pharma companies also who are hiring consultants these days. Okay. Thank you so much, Mnoy, sir, uh, thank you, for sir. covering our question, students, query. Uh, thank you, respected May, sir. I also thank you to ma'am, let's see ma'am, I think uh, she had left due to the, some work. So thank you so much, sir. Sir, uh, via your email, we will send a letter of appreciation for your valuable time. Sir, hope so as per our director, sir, sent it to you. Medical writing set up in your institute. So uh, we will also put this one in front of you. So kindly consider our, uh, this our request so that we can proceed a, in a good pattern. Uh, for the valuable things to uh, for the motor for more we can say that benefit to the pharma sector definitely sir
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot. Sir, via your email, we will definitely send you the letter of appreciation. So, rest of thing will be covered in the next uh, talk or we can say that uh, voice call. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Sir, if you have any other questions, then I will be doing a little bit of a little bit. You will be asking me. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so Thank much. You. Uh, bye, Ramesh. Bye, Ramesh. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ciao.